right? There, there still is counterparty risk in these things. They're just not centralized. So a lot of criticisms levied at Ripple, the company, is that, well, they're the largest holder of XRP, right? So they represent this huge counterparty risk where they can dump into the market. And you as an investor in the token are basically, you know, exposed to that, that you know, large, large slippage. So what percentage, of, what percentage do they still own? So, okay, so that's a whole nother controversial issue, but they own roughly 50% of uh, right. okay. a little, I think it's around 50%, you know, don't quote me on that. But what they decided to do back in 2017, because there was so many criticism that this counterparty risk was to put a lot of it into cryptographic escrow, mm -hmm. right? And so what they did is they tied their own hands with respect to how fast they can sell it into the open market. And what they did is they created a rolling 55 month uh, escrow time lock release. So every month, a certain amount of uh, XRP unlocks from this cryptographic escrow and it becomes available for Ripple to do whatever it wants to do with it. It can sell it in the open market, it can you know, provide it to liquidity providers. Uh, and then if they don't use it, what happens is that XRP goes back into this rolling window onto the 55th month. And so it's this ongoing cryptographic escrow that kind of perpetuates, right? So they're still the largest holder, but from my perspective, they're not a, as large a counterparty risk any longer because now there's a code that you can audit and say, yes, you know, there is a monetary discipline there, right? But in terms of total issuance, they don't have the ability to create any more XRP, right? Yeah. They no longer control the dominant uh, number of, uh, of, of validators. These, so it's these the same players. as Jeff Bezos and his shares in Amazon or any of these people is at some point they want to re they might realize it and put excess supply into the market. That's correct. Right. Uh, you know, as sh and the, you know, the difference between shareholders is they can create new shares, they can do stock splits, things like that. Whereas with the total supply known, uh, you, you can't do that. All you can really do is play within that 99 or 100 billion XRP, right? That, those yeah. are, that's your maximum allowance. Uh, but with respect to counterparty risk, you know, Bitcoin, for example, 95% of all uh, Bitcoin is in 5% of Bitcoin wallets. So it is more decentralized without argument uh, than XRP. However, it's not to say that there isn't large counterparty risk with respect to holders, right? There are still large Bitcoin wallets that if they decide to dump into the market, that price could, could see significant slippage. Like Satoshi Nakamoto's wallet. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's entire programs devoted to just watching these whales and seeing their, you know, their changes over time and seeing if there's any emergent behavior there. And people get very excited if uh, one of these things goes to an, ex uh, an exchange. They get yeah. very nervous, right? So, so just to be 100% transparent, you, you, every single ecosystem, because they're made by human beings, has some counterparty risk. You just need to identify what that is and decide, are you comfortable with that or not? Yeah. Uh, so for, for, for me, I think that XRP is uh, one of the ecosystems that's the most transparent, right? The fact that Ripple even communicates this to the community, they have no obligation to do so. They had no obligation to, to put these XRP into these escrow contracts, right? So, but they did so anyway, and they report exactly how much they, they print out, how much they sell, right? right? That's another key uh, transparency. They report exactly how much they sell. Now, uh, Coin Metrics did an excellent analysis of their uh, release schedule and exactly whether it matched up with their claims and basically was able to create a curve, a monetary issuance curve, and compare it to their reported amount of selling, right? So they, they did a very deep dive into how accurate their claims were. And they were pretty close. There were some minor discrepancies, but uh, both the work that they did was excellent in its analytics, uh, but it also essentially validated for an investor that, yeah, this system is pretty much working exactly like they intended. So mm -hmm. uh, as an investor in digital assets, that that's just some, one of the key steps that you need to do is to really understand who your counterparties are, what your monetary issuance schedule is, what are the rules of the game, and then to make a decision on whether it's something you wanna participate in, right? So, uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of, lot of stuff here. Uh, so, okay.